Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is the 18th lesson on meteorology. We're kind of right in the meat of uh, weather interpretation. We're talking about weather forecasts. It's very practical. You need to know this uh, because you will want to know when you go flying what you expect the weather can be like, let's say, in three hours or four hours or whenever you arrive in your destination. Weather, uh, weather forecasts are issued four times per day, uh, 30 minutes prior to the beginning of the start period. The start periods are uh, midnight Zulu, 0600 Zulu, 12 Zulu, and 18 Zulu. So that means that you would, the uh, the forecast would be issued at 2330, 0530, 1130, and 1730. The graphical area forecast, which we're going to learn about in a bit, has two charts. It has clouds and uh, icing. And for the period of validity, begins at the validity, and then they also uh, give the forecast six hours after and 12, 12 hours after. The terminal aerodrome forecast uh, is issued uh, from the time until amendment, usually six hours later, but it's often valid for 24 hours. And then every six hours, they just keep changing it. There's always kind of an overlap with the more current forecast. The abbreviations in uh, forecasts are identical to the ones in METARS and weather reports. So we have light being minus, if we think about it here, moderate, heavy, and then uh, things like BL, blowing, thunderstorms, it's all the same, FZ, freezing. Then, of course, we have our rain and snow, they're the same, mist, fog, and thunderstorms plus FC. Then same thing with sky clear, few, scattered, broken, overcast. Now, the only thing that's different is because the graphic area forecast uh, is going to have some additional symbols. So if we look in the bottom right, uh, we have this kind of cloud shape is an area of uh, significant cloud. We can see right here. I'll just make it right here. See, it's just a cloud shape. And then areas of turbulence is this kind of hashed mark. Then we can also have turbulence. Uh, moderate and severe, as well as icing. These are the symbols for uh, moderate and uh, severe icing and turbulence. Then thunderstorms is kind of like this R with an arrow, squall line, hurricane. Then there's also the typical frontal uh, symbols that we learned about earlier on uh, a few lessons back. So like we discussed, let's discuss the graphical area forecast. The graphical area forecast provides a weather forecast for a large area. It's not very specific, but it might be like for all of Ontario or all, all of the prairies. We just talked about these uh, symbols, so we don't need to go through them again. We'll move into actually looking at one and, and studying it. Okay, so here's an actual GFA, and let's just work our way through it, and hopefully you gain some understanding about how these things are laid out. So first off here, Pacific region, so you can tell this is British Columbia. It's issued uh, February 22nd, 2020 at time 2332 Zulu. It's valid, this is the important part, on February 23rd, 2020 at 12 Zulu. So this is the one that's forecasting about 12 hours out. So this was uh, uh, created 12 hours before the validity period. Here are the legend, here's the legend in case you forget the bad things, thunderstorm, freezing rain, ice pellets, freezing drizzle a scale if you're interested. These comments we're going to discuss uh, in a little bit as we get to them. Uh, and then the bottom here, I'm not sure what it says. It's too small and actually I've never even read it. Uh, but it probably says like you can't sue us or something like that. I'm, I'm not quite sure what it says. But anyway, let's move on to this weather here. So first off, uh, let's pay attention to the, the big features here. Uh, right here, I'll just draw here. I think this is Vancouver right here, the dot. That's Vancouver. We have a warm front right here. You see that warm front? Then we have a cold front right here, all the way. And then we have this these arrows. Remember, this is an occluded front or a trowel. This is where the cold front has caught up to the warm front and kind of forces that warm air up. We have L. So what does the L stand for? L is a low pressure area. The sea level pressure here is 991 hectopascals. We see right here. Okay. And over here, here's a high pressure region. It's 1,025 hectopascals. These black lines are isobars. So they connect uh, areas 
of equal barometric pressure, equal sea level pressure. So here along the whole line here, right here, all the way, if we follow this line all the way around to down here, the a, uh, sea level pressure there is 1,020 hectopascals. Here it would be 1,016, 1,012. So let's make our way back to this kind of miserable area. So uh, let's see, we identified Vancouver. Uh, I'll point this out. This is 20 knots. This is moving this way at 20 knots. This whole frontal system is moving at 20 knots. This green here, we can see this green along the outline. Okay, so that's going to be an area of, of significant weather. And so where do we find the significant weather? Well, we find it right here. Okay, so let's read this. It's overcast. The base is at 2,000, tops at 7,000. This is visibility, plus six statue miles visibility. Frequent TCU, towering cumulus, tops at 16,000, because it's after TCU, it's top 16,000. Three to six statue miles visibility and light rain showers, light SH showers, rain and mist. That's in this area right here, okay? Then in this area up here, right here, we have overcast the Bases are between two and 4,000 feet and the tops of 20,000 feet. It's plus, it's three to plus six statue miles, light rain, mist, occasional alto cumulus castellanus tops of 22,000, one statue mile visibility in light rain showers, mist, BR, patchy ceilings between five and 1,500 feet, uh, AGL. So remember, unless otherwise specified, in this case, uh, the, the heights of the clouds are ASL, above sea level. And this is mentioned actually right here. It's ASL, so you should know that. Uh, make sure you know that. And then let's uh, hear something else. Oh, here is uh, this is some wind. This will be, I think, 35 knots of wind in this area, and that's the direction. And here we'd have 25 knots of wind. Uh, what else should we look at? Oh, let's get to this A. So what is A? So A, they have a comment, and the reason being is because they, they ran out of space to write this stuff in. So we look at A over here, A. So over higher terrain precipitation, one to four statue miles in light snow, alto cumulus castellanus giving half a mile in snow showers. Then in area B, let's look at B right here. So in this area B, so the bases uh, are going to be 2000 feet broken cumulus tops at 6,000 plus six statue miles, occasional towering cumulus tops at 16,000, right? Because it's after the TCU. Five statue miles in light rain showers and mist. Okay, let's look at area C. C is up here, northern BC. So the bases are 8,000 feet, the cloud broken because it's before, remember? Layers tops at 24,000 feet plus six statue miles. Local, two statue miles. Visibility and light snow mist ceilings 800 agl so again because the ceiling is given and it'll say 800 agl above ground level whereas everything else is above sea level and then there is area d up kind of the yukon border let's get another d right up here d so the base is two to four thousand feet broken tops at eight thousand so that's this first one then the next layer, the, the base at 12,000, broken to 24,000, visibility plus six statue miles, frequent towering cumulus, tops of 14,000, the visibility three to plus six statue miles and light rain showers, mist, patchy ceiling six to 1,500 feet AGL. Then let's, uh, I'll let you do one. How about you figure out, what's this right here? What does that mean? So scattered. So because it's afterwards, it's scattered between seven and nine uh, thousand. Sorry, the scattered, the base is at 7,000, tops at 9,000 feet. Okay. Then if we go kind of like up here, well, it's kind of the edge of the cloud. There's not, nothing really given. Keep in mind too, this is outside of the area, so they're not really going to discuss what's outside of the area. If you want to take a look at it, you'll have to look at that area. So hopefully this makes kind of sense to you. Again, it's one of those things that just takes a lot of practice, uh, just getting used to it, reading through it and, and understanding what is going on. One thing I'll point out too, 
Uh, look at how close these isobars are together here by this uh, low. See, so you can expect pretty strong winds. And remember how we said that uh, the wind uh, turns, uh, wants to go from high to low, but then it goes counterclockwise. You can see here, see how right here, see how the wind turns counterclockwise. So it's about 45 degrees off the isobars turning and notice how strong they are. They're like 35 knots around this low. Whereas where the isobars are like super um, far apart, right? Like out here, uh, there's, there's not going to be much wind. So continuing on with the graphical area forecast, remember that we said that for each time period, two are produced. One is clouds and weather, which we just looked at. The other one is turbulence and icing. So that's what this is, is a turbulence and icing. So right here, icing, turbulence, and freezing level right here. So you'll notice there's the high and the lower in here, but the isobars are gone. But what they're replaced with is the freezing level here, okay? So these lines, the freezing level along here is 5,000 feet. Okay, so if you follow this line, that's the freezing level, that's 5,000 feet. And then there's other freezing levels here. Uh, here, look, it's here it says the surface. That's this line that kind of goes all the way here. Okay. This region right here, see how it's red? And has this, we'll just take a look here. So if we look at the legend, that's moderate turbulence from the surface to 3,000 feet AGL, mechanical and low level wind shear down there, okay? Let's look at another one right here. See this blue right here? So this blue area and this symbol here is moderate icing from the freezing level to tops of 12,000 feet. Mixed icing. So this is important to know. You're flying along, all of a sudden you pick up icing. You're like, oh crap. You're like, what do I do? Well, you're pretty much the freezing level. You're in the mountains, so the freezing level is like in the mountains. So you can't descend below it. But what you can do is climb above 12,000 feet. That's probably the tops of the clouds. We could look at that on the other chart. And uh, and then that's what we'd have to do to get out of the um, out of the uh, out of the freezing uh, out of the icing conditions. Here we can see. This low is moving at 10 knots that way. Um, right here, coastal sections, this one's kind of interesting. So here we have some severe turbulence, the symbol in coastal sections. So it says moderate localized severe turbulence from surface 3000 feet AGL, mechanical low level wind shear. So that's a result of, remember how strong the winds were when we looked at the last chart? The winds were very strong around this low. You have mountains in this area. You're just going to get hammered with, uh, with the uh, with the wind over here we have a symbol qs qs is quasi stationary so the high is not really moving it's just kind of sitting there these people in alberta right now are probably having like gorgeous weather at the time so this, this is how a clouds of weather uh chart looks like uh at the gfa of the clouds of weather and we'll discuss uh give you some more practice um with with other ones later on Let's talk about the terminal area forecast. So a terminal area forecast is a weather forecast for a specific aerodrome. And it's deemed to be representative within five nautical miles of the center of an aerodrome. So remember a METAR is the weather report. It's that point in time, what the weather is. The terminal area forecast is what the weather will be like at the aerodrome. So TAF is kind of similar to a METAR, except they throw in uh, additional dates and times. So Let's go through this together. It's a TAF. I think you got that figured out for Thunder Bay, YQT. The TAF was generated on the 23rd day of the month at time 0142 Zulu. It's valid from the 23rd at 02 Zulu until 14 Zulu on the 23rd. Okay, so this is when it's valid. So between 02 Zulu and 14 Zulu, the wind is variable three knots. Visibility is plus six statue miles, sky clear. Probability 40%. So there's a 40% chance between 09 and 14. So during this time, it's 40% chance of having three quarters of a mile visibility in mist, overcast 200 feet. Okay, so what they're telling you is the weather's good, it's nice, it's clear skies, but there's a 40% chance between 09 Zulu and 14 Zulu that the wind, the visibility will drop to three quarters of a mile in mist, overcast to 200 feet. So uh, this could be, uh, why could this be? Well, this could be, well, 09, so that would be radiation fog. That could be radiation fog. Uh, 
and here we this is all written out uh, the nice way you can select this when you go online you can if you don't want to uh, just interpret it it'll give you the plain language interpretation okay so here's a tricky one and uh, this is just pretty long but uh, it's really the same sequence as the other things that you saw so let's get through this here so it's a taf in vancouver so we know that on the 23rd day of the month issued at 0238 zulu it's valid 23rd day of the month from 03 zulu till the 24th of the month at 06 zulu wind variable three knots plus six statue miles visibility clouds few at 3000 scattered at 13000 broken at 15,000. Okay, so that's generally for the length of the TAF in Vancouver, that's what the weather's going to be like. But there's going to be some changes throughout the day from FM, from the 23rd at 06 Zulu, wind 080 at 8 knots, plus 6 statue miles, scattered at 3,000, broken at 5,000, overcast 10,000. Temporarily, between 06 Zulu and 08 Zulu, so for the two hour period on the 23rd between 6 and 8 Zulu, plus 6 statue mile and light rain. So they're telling you during this time period of two hours, you might get rain broken at 3,000, overcast 5,000. From 08 Zulu on the 23rd, wind 09010 plus 6 statue miles, light rain, few at 800, scattered at 1500 overcast 2500 so what they're telling you is that the weather's going downhill it's it's going to start raining here at 08 Zulu. tempo temporarily on the 23rd day of the month so same time or same date between 09 and 16 so it's just so what tempo means it's kind of going to be fluctuating it's coming on and off five statue miles visibility light rain mist scattered 800, overcast 1500. So what they're telling you is that if we go up from 08 Zulu, there will be rain, but at 09 Zulu, it's just gonna be temporarily, it's gonna be on and off uh, for the next seven hours. Becoming between 10 and 12, okay, so it's gradually, wind is increasing now, 110 at 15 gusts 25. From 16 Zulu, the wind is 170 of 15 plus six statue miles, light rain showers, scattered at 1500, broken at 3000. From 20 Zulu on the 23rd, wind 170 at 12 plus six statue miles, scattered 3000, broken at 5000. Becoming between 23rd, uh, from 23 Zulu to the next day at 01 Zulu, wind 260, 15 gusts 25, becoming between 02 Zulu and 040. 270 at 20 gusts 30, then the remarks next forecast. So this is a handful. This is like a massive one. It's very rare you're going to see a forecast this bad, but I think this was taken at about the same time as that GSA that I just showed you. So it's changing rapidly because you have a fast moving uh, frontal system and low pressure region coming in. But they might ask you on a test, they might say, at this time, what will be the cloud beams? And you have to go look through, the, uh, look through uh, at that time. Uh, what the cloud uh, will be like. So one of the things that you can do to really get comfortable with reading weather is compare the TAF with the graphical area forecast. And then it kind of gives you an idea what's going on. Unfortunately, they don't always line up because apparently they have different people uh, doing them. So, I mean, this comes down to some interpretation as well. And then somebody told me that the quality of the forecast have gone downhill uh, a while ago because all the good weather forecasters uh, do public forecasts because the public's more demanding than pilots. I don't know if it's true. Somebody told me that years ago. But anyway, here's a TAF for Vancouver, circled in red at the bottom. So uh, we can look here on the 23rd between 03 and 06 Zulu, variable three knots, plus six statue miles, few at 3,000, scattered at 13,000, broken at 15,000. And if we look here, like what's the weather like here? Well, it's pretty similar. So it's broken bases at two to 4,000 feet ASL. So yeah, that's that makes sense right here. And then the top's at 7,000 feet. So the top of this layer 
a few thousand is going to be at 7,000 feet. But there are patchy ceilings at 1,500 feet and uh, light rain and mist. So let's see as this weather system progresses. Let's see what happens. So here's what's being forecast six hours later at 06 Zulu. So notice how this uh, frontal system, this low, has now advanced on Vancouver. Okay, you have this warm front coming in, 06 Zulu. So let's look at what's happening at 06 Zulu. So right here, 06 Zulu. Okay, so we haven't quite, the, the, the front hasn't quite hit it yet. So we have scattered at 3,000, broken at 5,000, overcast at 1,000. Temporarily between 06 and 08 Zulu. Okay, so this it's light rain broken at 3,000. So this light rain is being caused by this warm front coming in. And if we look here closely, it's kind of difficult. We can see it says that the bases of the clouds are 3,000 tops at 5,000. So that's going to be this broken layer that we just took out right there. And then there's another layer of bases at 12,000 tops at uh, 22,000. So that's this one that they're calling here. I'm not quite sure why they're different, but it could be because, like I said, they're they're slightly different person working on it. And then, yeah. And here we are now at uh, 12 hours later at 12 Zulu. So now this frontal system has is like right in the midst of Vancouver right here. And we can see, so it's becoming by 12 Zulu. So at this time, wind 110, 15, gust 25. So now we have gusty winds because the isobars are closer together. The low is approaching. And from 16 Zulu. So yeah, we, we're going to have this light rain showers uh, for the wind. And then after, once the whole thing clears, well, now it's broken at 5,000, scattered at 3,000. And we can imagine at 20 Zulu, so this would be eight hours later, we're going to be getting like this, like whatever's right here. But it's mostly clear by that. Uh, point behind the, the cold front. So I'd encourage you, uh, just get some TAFs, get some METARs, get some GFAs, just start practicing, try to figure out how this weather goes together. The uh, next forecast we're going to discuss is the upper wind forecast. The upper wind forecast provides upper level winds and temperature for specific weather stations in 3,000 foot increments. It's used for flight planning, so when we want to figure out what our ground speed and heading will be, we'll learn more about that in our navigation exercise. Okay, so here let's look at this one. This is Ottawa. Okay, so it says the forecast valid 06 Zulu for use between 05 and 09 Zulu. So we'd look at what our time is. Then there are different times here. So we would look at, they go up 24 hours later. And then here are the altitudes at the top. We have 3,000, 6,000, 9,000. And so here at 3,000, the wind 270 at 23. Okay, let's look at 12,000. 12,000, wind 280 degrees true at 38 knots, temperature minus 11. Let's look at the next one, 18,000, 280 degrees true, 49 knots, temperature minus 22. So you do want to look at this when choosing an altitude because you don't want to be flying into a really strong headwind. So let's just say we're going west and we have to figure out what altitude we're going to go at. Well, 18,000 feet, we're going west, we're going straight into the wind. 9,000 feet, we're down to 27 knots. So we're still under the wind, but we have 20 knots less wind. So it might be better off going at 9,000. Now there's other considerations too, icing and turbulence, but it kind of gives you an idea uh, how you're going to use this upper wind forecast. Let's talk about an airmet forecast. Uh, an airmet forecast advises pilots of weather phenomena that may, may affect the safety of the flight that are not in the GFA. So let's say the GFA comes out, but then some weather comes up, well, it gets, it's get put in an airmet kind of a warning. Okay, and it goes up to 24,000 feet. So examples are the wind greater than 30 knots, less than three miles visibility, thunderstorms, moderate turbulence, icing, mountain wave, that sort of thing. So here we'll just work our way through it. It tells us it's an air met from Montreal, valid. This is some ATC code. Here's the validity period that we said. So the 30th and 1925 to the 30th at 2325. These are the uh, ATC identifiers, you don't need to know this. Montreal FIR, so surface visibility, surface visibility, one quarter to one statue miles in fog and mist, overcast cloud, 10,000. Then we have 1,200 feet, 
and then this is observed. Th these are the coordinates that they're going to see this uh, at. So you could plot those on the map if you wanted to. So here's the reason for the air met. The satellite pictures and surface observations indicate an area of stratus and fog along the Quebec lower North Shore. It was not well represented in the GFA and required the issuance of an air met. Here's an air met. Important thing is moderate icing observed at 07 Zulu within 45 nautical miles of this line. So you could plot this out if you can. So the reason was the freezing drizzle was observed at 07 Zulu at Churchill. Icing was not forecast in the GFA, leading to the forecaster to issue the following airmet message. Let's talk about a SIGMET. A SIGMET is the purpose of it is to advise pilots of weather phenomena that may affect the safety of the flight. So frequent thunderstorms, hail, severe turbulence, icing, mountain wave, and wind shear. So it's just like an airmet, but it says SIGMET now. And 16th day of the month to, from 2225 Zulu to the 17th day of the month at 0225 Zulu. These are the ATC identifiers. You don't need to worry about that. But the Winnipeg flight information reader, squall line, thunderstorm observed within 20 nautical miles of a line. And then here's the line that you could plot out. Tops, flight level 340, so the tops of the clouds are 34,000 feet, moving east at 15 knots, no change expected. And here's the reason why they observed the line of thunderstorms. Here's another one, valid on the 16th day of the month between 1220 and 1620 on the 16th day of the month from Edmonton by our flight information region. Severe mountain wave forecast within 30 nautical miles of this line. So here's the line you can plot again. 7,000 feet to 14,000 feet quasi stationary and it's intensifying. Why they can't write this out in full sentences, I have no idea. I think it probably goes back to the kind of teletype that they had back in the 1960s. And so everyone just kind of got used to it. And you, you do get used to this. Um, but I mean, to be honest with you, like some of these things I haven't seen in a while, like MTW, well, it's I'm pretty sure it's mountain wave, but it, it wasn't obvious to me. Let's just put it that way. So don't feel too bad if you can't get it right away. There you go, severe mountain waves, lee waves along the eastern side of the Rockies. The line falls entirely within the Edmonton FIR, but covers two GFA regions. Terminal area forecast, forecast weather at an airport. Clouds are given in AGL, issued every six hours. Graphical area forecasts give weather over a large area. The clouds are in ASL unless noted. SIGMETs forecast severe weather and AIRMETs forecast adverse weather that are not in the GFAs. The FDs forecast upper winds. So here's a sample test question. Uh, what do you expect the weather to be in Vancouver at 07 Zulu? So we work our way through here. So between 03 and 06 Zulu. So from 06 Zulu, okay. And then there's another one that's going to apply 06 to 08 Zulu. So from 06 Zulu, we have Wind 0808 knots plus six statue miles visibility, scattered 3,000, broken 5,000, overcast 10,000. Temporarily between 06 and 08 Zulu, plus six statue miles and light rain, broken 3,000, overcast 5,000. So we could expect the weather, it's going to be temporarily at 07. So we know that from right here in this time period right there, it's going to be light rain. The answer is A, light rain. What are the ceilings and tops of the clouds in Smithers? So here we have a nice little arrow, so you don't need to memorize which one's Smithers. It's given for you. So, well, right here in this area, it directs us to B. So we're gonna look at B right here because there's too much text to foot put into this small area. So right here, see a three, 3,000 to 5,000 broken to 8,000. So remember this is ASL. So the ceilings are going to be, and it's a broken cloud, so it's a ceiling. So between three and 5,000 feet ASL, plus six statue miles, frequent towering cumulus, tops at 10,000 feet, three quarters of a mile to five miles visibility, light snow showers, mist, patchy ceilings, five to 1,200 feet AGL with rain, snow. Okay, so let's go through these. We know it's ASL, three to 5,000 feet ASL patchy, 
500 to 1200, I think we said AGL. So, and the tops are gonna to be at 8,000 because we know 8,000 is right here. So that's going to be, the correct answer is going to be eight. What are the winds and temperature at 7,500 feet in Ottawa and 19 Zulu? So 19 Zulu, we're going to use the bottom one right here and we can interpolate. So 7,500 feet is exactly between six and 9,000. So right here, we're gonna look at this 240, 240. So winds are 240 degrees true, true. And 21 to 25, so we halfway between that's gonna be 23 knots, 23 knots. Temperature is gonna be minus four. But it's just so 240 degrees at 23, and this is true. Answer is A. That concludes this lesson on aviation forecast. It's been a big lesson. There's a lot to know. Just uh, all I can recommend you do is just uh, practice, practice, practice. We'll see you in our next lesson.